Well, good morning. It's good to see you guys and uh, got our holiday meal today and just want to thank everybody that's put in a lot of work and hours to make that uh, uh, reality. Uh, Christmas, uh, December is here. Uh, it is coming. Uh, we're excited about that. If you're, uh, I remember being a lot younger and, you know, it just wasn't, <laughs> I can still remember that. It, Chris, Christmas wasn't, Christmas wasn't uh, Christmas unless it was cold. I mean, you had to have a little snow, you had to have, you know, and now I'm starting to kind of warm up to the idea of a 75 degree Christmas, but uh, I don't think it's going to happen uh, this week. Uh, it's been nice the last few days. But uh, if you like snow and uh, you like cold with your Christmas, you're going to get your wish. Uh, so uh, be prepared for that. And uh, uh, I'm excited about this time of year. I'm excited about this uh, uh, season because it gives us a great opportunity to tell the greatest story uh, ever told. And it's not just a story, it's the truth. Okay? It's, it's an amazing thing. And, and you know, I, I don't know where you are in life, I don't know what uh, circles you keep, I don't know the people that you communicate with. Uh, I don't know the, the paths that you cross on a daily basis. I don't know all those people, but you do. And, and, and I can't help but wonder that there's probably a good portion of, of, of you that come across a good portion of people on a daily basis who don't know Jesus uh, and really don't even believe the story, okay? Uh, that they don't even, you know, when you, when you tell it, it's just like any other fairy tale story that's ever been told. And it's like, yeah, that's all cool, but, you know, did it really happen? Uh, is it really is it really true and 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 you know we we uh we have our nativities and and we have our decorations and and we do all of our things that uh, kind of point people in the direction of the story but what you need to realize is that this story is not confined uh to one moment in time uh the the story of jesus was not just uh, it didn't just happen in, in a in a small uh period of time it it wasn't just uh, written about one instance that took place and 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 really and truly the story of christmas doesn't begin with a couple that were trying to figure out how they got pregnant the story of christmas begins with the story of a couple that is concerned that they'll never get pregnant and it happened thousands of years before. The story of Christmas begins with a promise that God makes, and it's recorded in Genesis. And at the time that this promise is made, it could not have made any sense at all in the context to the person that it was made. You know, we, we talk about the Bible a lot, and I have one, and I hope you do too, and we have it in a lot of different ways, in electronic forms and everything else, but, but you know, this is not a, a fairy tale book that somebody just wrote and, and gave to somebody. Uh, this is a collection of books. Uh, it's a collection of books that's been gathered over thousands of years. And one of the, one of the oldest books that is in, in, this, uh, in this collection is a book called Genesis. And Genesis goes all the way back to the very beginning of the, of the world. And, and, and it has been recorded history and recorded Jewish history and handed down and, and recopied and, 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 and kept intact for thousands of years. And, and the thing about the book of Genesis is that it begins the Christmas story. Uh, in Genesis chapter 12 and, and verse 1, uh, you guys have probably seen this before. If you're familiar with church, if you've been around a lot, you've probably saw, seen this, read this, uh, experienced this. But, and we've talked about it here not too long ago because we talk about the faith in this statement that the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to a land I'll show you. I want you to just leave, and when you leave, I'll, tell you, I'll let you know when you get there. Uh, it took a lot of faith to do that. And, he, and, then, and then the promises come if Abraham chooses to be obedient to what God's called him. And he says, I will make you into a great nation. Really? I don't have kids. Okay? How do I become a great nation if I don't even have kids? Okay, that's fine. And, and so I will make your name great. I'm going to make you famous. And you will be a blessing. It's kind of a foreign concept in this time. And he goes on, I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And, and here's this big statement, and I want you to kind of hang on to this through the whole day today. All peoples, all people groups, everybody, Abram, I want you to leave and I want you to go, and this is what I'm going to do if you'll be obedient and listen to me. All people on earth. Every tribe, every person, and, and you kind of uh, kind of wonder what his concept of the world was at that time, if he even had any concept of the size of the globe, but God said everybody 
will be blessed through you. What a statement. What a promise. And like I said, it was made to somebody who in the context of it couldn't get his head around it. Guarantee there's no way that Abram was like, oh yeah, I see this plan coming. Okay, yeah, I know how this is all going to unfold. No, there's no way. But it was a promise that he had given to him and he heard it and he took it to heart. And there it is. Everybody on earth will be blessed through you. And part of that is the fact that the culture in which he lived was not a culture of blessing. I mean, we've, we've studied the Old Testament. You guys have studied, some of you, 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 you've studied history, okay? We live in a very calm culture, okay? Bloodshed and violence and, and, and all of those things was, was common in those days. And, and people didn't bless other people. They didn't go to bless other people groups. They conquered other people groups. They plundered other people groups. They took everything that they had. That's what the culture was like in which they lived. And so, so for, for God to say to Abram, you are going to be a blessing to everyone was not only hard for him to understand, but it was completely foreign to anything that he would have been a part of. Every tribe, every gathering, all people on earth blessed through you. That's amazing. It's hard, it's hard, it's hard to even get a hold of. How could it be possible? How could it happen? You see, in this time, tribes don't bless each other. It just doesn't happen. But Abraham chose to believe the unbelievable promise. He chose to believe this unbelievable promise because God told him this is what he And so he went, and God showed him where he was to go. And, 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 and he eventually gave him a son. Now, let's take just a quick look at uh, Abraham's family tree because this is important to, uh, to understand because you can read through this and that's kind of small and, and that's okay. You don't have to be able to see it very, very well. But, but when you look straight down in the center, you realize that there were other people involved at the top. But, but God had told him, I'm going to give you a son. And he did. And his name was Isaac. Okay? His name was Isaac and he came not when Abraham thought it was going to happen, but when God knew it was time. And, and, and listen, when you go down through this family tree, and this is not a complete family tree. There's lots of things that are kind of skipped over, so I kind of wanted to package it there so you could see it. But there is lots of dysfunction in this family tree, okay? You guys can read and study about all these people, and let me tell you, when you read and study the lives of some of these folks, and you read and see why there's three boxes under Abraham instead of just the one, you, you begin to see that the dysfunction started with Abraham himself, okay? And, and his lack of faith at times, and, and all these things. And then you have Jacob and Esau, and you realize that Esau was the older brother, and it should have come down through Esau, but instead Jacob stole his birthright. I mean, it goes on and on and on. There's all kinds of crazy things that took place. And when you come down here to the bottom, <laughs> you have Jacob, and Jacob had 12 sons, and, and one of those sons, whose name was Joseph, his brothers, you know that story, sold him into slavery, and he winds up in Egypt. And eventually, through a famine and other things, the whole family arrives in Egypt. And then the promise, I will make you into a great nation unfolds. All of a sudden, the numbers of the Hebrew people begin to multiply, and they become a great nation in the land of Egypt. The problem was, <laughs> they became a nation of slaves. And for several hundred years, the people of Israel live in Egypt as slaves. Listen, when you're living life as a slave, you don't feel very blessed, do you? Okay? They probably weren't feeling the blessing. They probably weren't feeling the outpouring of this blessing while they were living as slaves in Egypt. Now, remember, the promise was that I will make you a blessing and that all people on earth would be blessed. Well, God sent a deliverer for the Hebrew slaves. His name was Moses. And you guys know the story of the Exodus. Listen, when Moses got done with Pharaoh... When Moses, when God was working through Moses and got finished with the people of Egypt, probably not feeling very blessed, okay? I mean, come on. We're talking one plague after another. I mean, the water turns to blood. You got flies and frogs and then the firstborn. I mean, come on. 
they're probably not feeling like this nation of Israel is bringing blessing upon them. So you get a little confused. Time goes on. The people of Israel go into the land of Canaan, and they become a kingdom. We fast forward to David. King David, and we've studied David this year, he was the warrior king. He was a man after God's own heart. David brought peace and prosperity to the nation of Israel unlike any other leader they had known. He had peace and he had, he had peace treaties with the neighboring kingdoms and, and, and he had a time of peace. And, and, and so now we look into the nation of Israel, we look into biblical history and we begin to see a time that just maybe something could happen here. That God really could use this nation to bless other people. Now they are starting to be a, in a position of power, in a position of th authority, in a position of influence. So let's see what happens. David's son Solomon, he was the builder king. He took over for King David. And listen, <laughs> Israel became wealthy and influential like never before. I mean, amazing stuff. I mean, listen, you, you, you think about, I don't know if you ever watched that Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous, okay? Uh, those guys that just only had network TV that come on late sometime, and so Robin Leach, right? And, and listen, none of it, okay? None of it compares to what Solomon built. I mean, that guy was exquisite. I mean, it was extravagance. I mean, it was incredible. His horse stalls made our homes look sad, okay? I mean, everything about everything that Solomon did was amazing. And, and he, he built, and, and Israel was more wealthy, more influential, and, and, all the, and people came from everywhere to see Solomon's construction and to sit at his feet. And, and he was blessed with wisdom. And so they would come to hear his wisdom. And here's the thing. Solomon made two choices. One of his choices was to marry the daughters of the surrounding kings. Okay? And that's how he wanted to keep the peace. But the critical mistake that he made was not only did he marry them, but he chose to do something that God was very clear that he was not to do. And we find this in 1 Kings chapter 9, verses 1 through 9. This is what God says to Solomon. When Solomon finished building the temple of the Lord in the royal palace, he had achieved all he had desired to do. I mean, this place was knock out. And the Lord appeared to him a second time. And as he appeared to him at Gibeon, and this is what he, this is what he says to him, I have heard the prayer and plea you have made before me. I have consecrated this temple which you have built by putting my name there forever. My eyes and my heart will always be there. As for you, if you walk before me faithfully with integrity of heart and uprightness as David your father did and do all I command and observe my decrees and laws, this is what you need to do, Solomon, I will establish your royal throne over Israel forever. As I promised David your father when I said, you shall never fail to have a successor on the throne of Israel. But... And here it is. But if you or your descendants turn away from me and do not observe the commands and decrees I have given you, and this is the mistake that he made with those that he chose to marry, to go off and serve other gods and worship them. If you make that choice, Solomon, then I will cut off Israel from the land I have given them, and I will reject this temple I have consecrated for my name. Israel will then become a byword and an object of ridicule among all peoples. This temple will become a heap of rubble. All who pass by will be appalled and will scoff and say, Why has the Lord done such a thing to this land and to this temple? People will answer, Because they have forsaken the Lord their God who brought their ancestors out of Egypt and have embraced other gods, worshiping and serving them. That is why the Lord brought all of this disaster on them. And Solomon knew what he was not supposed to do, but he did it anyway. After Solomon died, the kingdom was divided. If you study Jewish history, you realize that the kingdoms were split into two. And the northern kingdom was known as uh, Israel. The southern kingdom was known as Judah. 
And, and, and as time went on, uh, the Assyrians uh, attacked uh, the northern kingdom and, and carried off all of the uh, craftsmen, all of the people of skill, all of the people of influence. They carried them off into uh, other lands. And, and as you begin to see this, the, the southern kingdom is on, now on the edge of implosion and everything is coming unraveled as a result of Solomon's sin. And, 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 and this is where you begin to realize is like we were right there. We were right there in a place of influence, and all of a sudden, Israel can't even take care of itself. Israel can't even take care of itself. How in the world can we expect them to be a blessing to all nations? Judah was about to be invaded. Everything has fallen apart. But here's the thing. <laughs> this is God. Right in the middle of that chaos. Right in the middle of all of that madness right in the middle of that immense failure god sends the prophet isaiah he sends the prophet isaiah and this is what isaiah has to say i will also make you a light for the gentiles that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth seriously in the midst of all this, you come with this promise? We can't even take care of ourselves. We can't even save ourselves. Everything is coming unraveled. And here is this, what do you mean? We can't even be a light in our own world. And then years after that, the southern kingdom became sort of a vassal state to the Assyrian Empire. And then years after that, the Babylonians invaded. And just as God had promised to Solomon, the temple was destroyed. And again, the most important and skilled people are carted away, and everything lies in ruins. Everything is in shambles. And again, right in the middle of that chaos, again, right in the middle of that dark time, God sends another prophet. He sends Malachi. And in chapter 1 and in verse 11, he says this, my name will be great among the nations. From where the sun rises to where it sets, in every place incense and pure offerings will be brought to me because my name will be great among the nations, says the Lord Almighty. Are you kidding? One of my favorite Christmas movies is Elf. Okay, I love Elf. And they play it a lot, so if you haven't seen it, you'll get a chance, okay? And, and, one, and one, of my, one of the scenes that I really enjoy in that movie is when he, is, uh, getting, when he gets the job in the department store. And he walks in with the manager, and he says, what is all this? And the manager looks at him and says, this is the North Pole. And he says, no, it isn't. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. And this has to be the way the people of Israel felt when Malachi is proclaiming God's word. We are going to be a blessing to all the people. No, we're not. No, it isn't. And here's the thing, that may be the way you feel. That may be the way you feel this Christmas. When I stand up here and say God loves you, God has a plan for your life, in your head you're hearing, no he doesn't, no it isn't, no he can't. Yes he does, yes he does, yes he does. Malachi says that in every place that people worship, people will worship God in heaven. You see, Judah wouldn't be able to see that. And then years pass, and then in 63 B.C., Rome comes to power. History tradition tells us that Pompey uh, came to Jerusalem. Uh, it teaches us that he, he uh, rode his horse up the temple that had been rebuilt, uh, that he rode up onto that place and that he, that he come off of his horse and went into the temple and went into the Holy of Holies and pulled the curtain back to see this God of Israel. And man, was he disappointed. <laughs> there was nothing there, a box. There was no idol. There was no graven image. And he couldn't believe it. 
And so the Roman occupation of Israel began. But this is where we see God at work behind the scenes. At a time where the Jews could not even possibly imagine how in the world they could fulfill the promise that God had given to Abraham. How in the world could they possibly be a blessing to all nations? Who wants to trust a God who can't take care of his own people? And folks, that is what makes the story of Christmas so remarkable. It's what makes the story of Christmas so amazing. Because when it was as hopeless as it could possibly be, when, it was, when, it was, when God's promise to Abraham was as far out as it could possibly be to the people, when, when it made absolutely no sense to them whatsoever at all, that the Roman Empire had taken over and that they had control, years later, Paul would write it like this. We've studied him a lot. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 4 says, But when the set time had fully come. Look, the transportation systems, the ports, the boats, all of the things that made Paul's missionary journeys possible. When God, all of the road systems, all of the things that the Romans built, God's using it. He used all of it. He used everything, and when everything was in place just the way he wanted it, when everything came to be just the way he wanted it, when the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, and born under the law. Wow. To redeem those that we might receive adoption to sonship. When nobody was expecting it when nobody was expecting it when no one thought it was about to happen out of nowhere god says gabriel come here i need you to do something and god sent the angel gabriel in luke chapter one to nazareth a town in galilee When the time had fully come, God sent Gabriel to this place. And listen. Here's the amazing part. This is what makes this story so remarkable. When God says, Abraham, I am going to bless everybody on earth through you. And when the time had fully come, God sent the angel Gabriel, and guess what? Later on this month, people all over this world are going to read this story, and they know their names, and all people on earth may be blessed through him. All right? That's what makes it so amazing. And it didn't just, it wasn't made up. It wasn't just told to to Mary that day. It was a fulfillment of prophecy that had been put down over thousands of years. And time after time after time through that process, when it seemed so hopeless, God would send his messenger onto the stage and say, Don't give up hope. Don't quit believing. I know it looks bad, but I will send a Savior. And so Gabriel comes, and the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. You will be with child and give birth to a son. You're to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will Never end. And in the end, God kept his promise that he made to Abraham. He kept the promise. His promise was fulfilled in the person of Jesus Christ. And that's what makes this story so remarkable. Is God orchestrated it over thousands of years. The Christmas story that unfolded over 2,000 years ago was to be unfolded thousands of years before that. This is not something that just came about in a few moments. And here's the awesome thing. It continues today. It continues today. 
God decided that the world needed Christmas. And he began to work out the story of Christmas on the world stage. And the story of Christmas, in that story, we are reminded, and I remind you today, that even when God seems not to be moving, even when it seems that God is not active in your life, trust me, he is. He is. And even at times when you don't think that you can trust Him, even at times when you don't understand what He's doing, even times when, you, when He is silent and you can't hear anything, He's there. He's there. God is active even when it seems like He's not. And what we realize, <laughs> that God not only sent His Son, to be the savior of the world. He sent his son to be your savior in the world. He sent him for you. And he was thinking of you. All right? He was thinking of you when he put this plan in motion. And all of the things that we couldn't understand, all of the things that the people who were involved couldn't understand, this young couple that just got called in when Gabriel said, hey, this is what's going to happen, it's like, I don't get it, okay? No, it isn't. No, it's not. It doesn't make sense to me, okay? This doesn't make sense to me. That's okay. There'll be lots of times in your life where it may not make sense. The story reminds us That even when circumstances appear to be otherwise, God can be trusted. All right? You can put your trust in Him. Okay? Because don't forget something. (laughs) He came. All right? And He's coming again. And that promise is just as real. And that promise has been laid out over thousands of years, just like this promise was, and it's coming. And and we can say, oh, it's been too long. No, it hasn't. No, it isn't. (laughs) All right? It has not been too long. God is right on time. And and the same way that he came when 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 the angel came to Mary and said, it's time. When the time had fully come, it will happen again. When the time is fully come, God will say, it's time. And only he knows that. Only he knows that. And through the story of Christmas, we have the hope and the salvation in the person of Christ. My challenge for you as we continue this Christmas story in the weeks ahead. Next week we're going to discover how God needed Christmas so that he could come to us. I pray that you have an opportunity to take this story to someone. I, have, I pray that you have an opportunity, if you, if you believe, if you're a believer, that you have an opportunity to open these pages over these next few weeks when everybody's thinking about Christmas, when everybody's thinking about Christmas, that you'll have an opportunity that God will open their heart and you can share this, cell, this, this life-changing message. But maybe you're here this morning and maybe you feel like some of these that we've talked about today. Maybe you feel like Abraham. Maybe you feel like uh, Mary. Maybe you feel like those, those people of, of, uh, of ancient Israel when the Babylonians are, are coming in. And maybe you're thinking, where is he? He's not in my world. He's not active in my heart. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. You can trust him. You can trust him. His love for you has never wavered. His love for you has never failed His love for you is just as active today, even though you may not be able to see it. God gives us this story, and he he shows this, this story so that we can look at the pages of history and realize that he is alive, and you can trust him. And if you need to do that today, I pray that you will. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much. For the Christmas story. We thank you for this uh, Advent season, for this, for this expecting time that we, that we go through over these next few weeks. And we begin to see just how amazing, miraculous, and remarkable this story is. That it unfolded over thousands of years. And that you, Father, 
that you are watching it and conducting it all the way. Father, we're reminded this morning that even though when it seems like you're not active in our lives, you are. Even though when it seems like we can't trust you, we can. And Father, maybe some of us are here this morning and we're just guilty of that. We're just guilty of not believing, not trusting enough, not seeing where you're active in our lives and we just kind of turn an ear away and just kind of go try to do our own thing. Father, I I pray this morning this message has been to just invite us back, to draw us back. Father, you know where we are this morning. Father, maybe there's somebody out there that, uh, uh, maybe there's somebody here this morning that they, they know that uh, uh, they're, they go to work every day, they go to school every day, and, and that one person that just doesn't get Christmas, they don't, they don't believe, it's all make-believe, it's all fairy tale, none of it's real. Father, I pray that, that, a, that a system of conversations can begin to take place. Father, that those challenging questions can be posed, and, and Father, that that. that those individuals would see this more than just an event that occurred in, in one moment. But it was something that was brought about over thousands of years of prophecy and promise. Father, that makes us all stop and think and realize the truth in the greatest story ever told. Father, I pray now that you would just guide us in this time of reflection and invitation and help us, Lord, to respond in the way you've called us to. We pray it, Lord. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you please stand?